uh, as we were trying to uh, determine what happened to uh, little TJ and to Miracle. And when you guys came out to cover that and we did not get any additional good leads from our Crime Stoppers, uh, from our non-emergency, from our dispatch. Uh, we as collectively as, as a police department gathered and, and started talking about uh, the other possibilities that uh, these children had gone into the water. So it wasn't until um, uh, later in the week that we found video of them going into the water. Uh, going down the embankment uh, towards the water. And when they didn't come back up from that embankment, uh, we knew what we were dealing with. Um, now came the focus of trying to recover, trying to recover those two children. And I knew it was going to be a monumental task because of the time lapse, the time that had passed and just how the river works. Uh, so we called on a number of different resources to help us. And without question, each and every law enforcement agency, each and every uh, rescue service that we called immediately deployed boats, deployed personnel in an attempt to find these children. I want to read you. Um, from the city of Tulsa, our agencies that responded and were a part of this. It was the Tulsa Fire Department, Urban Search and Rescue, uh, our Stormwater Department for the city, our Child Crisis, our Child Exploitation, our Fugitive Warrants Unit, our Special Response Team, uh, our Special Victims Unit, our Family Violence Unit, our Tulsa Police Dive Team, our canine units, our cyber crimes unit, and our crime scene unit, um, not to mention all of the patrol officers that were working that area. All of them came together and were called on in a, in a monumental effort to find uh, these children. Our outside agencies that took part, Wagner County Sheriff's Office, the Wagner County Emergency Management, the Cherokee Marshal Service, Rogers County Sheriff's Office, Verdigris Fire Department, Oklahoma Highway Patrol, Weber's Fall Fire Department, Fort Gibson Fire Department, Muskogee County Emergency Management, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the Oklahoma Game Warden, and of course our federal partners, the FBI. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention our public safety uh, center, our 911 center, that was also involved in this effort. It's a lot of people, a lot of agencies, a lot of uh, cooperation, uh, a lot of collaborating, uh, all for one mission. Uh, we knew when uh, Sheriff uh, Chris Elliott contacted me. Um, of a child, child's body, we knew that uh, more likely than not that was going to be one of our victims. And of course, uh, on I believe it was Wednesday, the recovery of a second body uh, out near Rogers County. So this morning, or I guess late last night, we did get DNA analysis back. And the DNA analysis does confirm that those are our two children, uh, TJ and Miracle, uh, that were in that water and recovered. Uh, it's saddening, but it's also, from our perspective, we are elated that we were able to bring closure. And this is closure. Uh, it's closure because we were able to actually locate uh, those two and bring them home to their families. So um, um, I know from, um, from my perspective, uh, I know each and every person that's involved in this was so happy that they were able to do that. 
I cannot thank uh, Sheriff Chris Elliott enough. He immediately uh, offered whatever we needed to assist. Uh, Sheriff Scott Walton did the same thing when we got out in Rogers County and knew we were out in Rogers County, a quick phone call, and there were deputies there in, in no time. Uh, also, uh, I contacted Sheriff Vic Rigolato in Tulsa County Sheriff's Office uh, when we planned to do this massive search effort and needed uh, airboats and, and other equipment that we don't have. Uh, he immediately sent, within 30 minutes, there was a deputy in the command post uh, wanting to know where they should launch their airboats. So great effort, monumental effort. I also would be remiss if I don't talk about and tell you what the DPS Commissioner uh, Scully and a phone call conversation with him and Colonel uh, Brent Sugg, they offered every support that they had from the state level and OHP obviously launched their airboats as well, uh, had equipment that we don't have and had expertise in the waterways and, um, and I can't tell you enough. Uh, our partners at Tulsa Fire Department and what they did and what they were able to do uh, using their search teams to, uh, to navigate through the water. Uh, I saw them going into places that I didn't think was possible to go in, but they did in search of uh, these children. Um, you know, one of the things that I do is I, I constantly um, get lots of phone calls and encouragements from uh, uh, everyone within the community. I had a phone call from uh, TPS Chief uh, Matthias Wicks uh, with their police department and one of the things that he told me is, you know, Wendell, we are, we're fathers first, we're parents first. Uh, at some point this uniform is going to hang up somewhere, this badge is going to hang up somewhere and I will not be a police officer. Uh, we, they can take our jobs away from us and take other things away from us but the one thing they can't take away is the fact that if you're a parent you're a parent if you're a mother or father you're a mother or father and they can't take that away from you so it was it was very humbling to uh, to to be so involved in this investigation and to put forth all the effort that we did and we did it because we're all parents we're all sons and daughters and that is what carries us through. So I want to thank everyone that's involved in this. I am happy that we're able to bring closure and I know what that closure brings uh, um, another chapter and that is I know that all of you are, are wondering what we will do next, what are the next steps for us and that's why I invited the Tulsa County District Attorney Steve Kunzweiler to come in and talk to you and let you guys know what the next steps are and then we'll open it up for questions. Thank you. you know, whenever a child dies, we have the right to ask questions. How could this have happened? Why did this happen? What could have been done to prevent it from happening? Whenever a child dies, our emotions come readily to the surface. We become upset, we become dismayed, we become frustrated, we become angry. What I do know about, or what do I know about young Miracle and TJ, whose last images were those of each other holding their hands? I'm confident of this. I'm confident that they're resting in the bosom of their creator as innocent and as beautiful is when they lived. Cases which involve the possibility of criminal charges related to the death of a child are necessarily emotionally charged. That is natural. However, it's the duty of the district attorney's office to set aside the obvious emotions and to do the job for which we were hired to do. We must look at these cases as we do with all cases with an eye towards the objective facts. We must weigh those facts and apply them to the law. A decision to file charges is never taken lightly and it will be no different in this case. As in all cases, a person 
who's been arrested and charged with a crime is presumed innocent. That presumption remains with that person until and unless a judge or a jury determines otherwise. That's a worthy protection which has held this country together for the past two centuries, and it's important to safeguard. My office has received hundreds of uh, reports from the Tulsa Police Department that we are looking over at this moment, and my office will undertake our responsibility on this case, and we will do that with the professionalism that's expected. Thank you. With that, I'll open it up for questions. Just kind of hearing in your voice, you know, took this.